William Woods University began with an idea for a place where students could get the best education possible. Fast forward 140 years or so, students from around the world have come to the beautiful traditional campus for unique majors, small classes, and big opportunities. And now, with evening programs, graduate degrees, and a learn in your pajamas option known as our online degrees, a powerful education is, well, wherever you are. Sure, a lot of things have changed, but one thing remains. At William Woods University, we have something for everyone. William Woods University began with an idea for a place where students could get the best education possible. Fast forward 140 years or so, students from around the world have come to the beautiful traditional campus for unique majors, small classes, and big opportunities. And now, with evening programs, graduate degrees, and a learn in your pajamas option known as our online degrees, a powerful education is, well, wherever you are. Sure, a lot of things have changed, but one thing remains. At William Woods University, we have something for everyone. All right, so we're back for another edition of the Coaches Show. I am Sport Information Director Ben Mazzara. Along to my left is my assistant Chris Kasky, and on production tonight is Scott Parker. Tonight we've got a lot to get through with winter sports going on. We got spring season underway. Um, these past couple of weekends, so Chris, why don't you tell everybody what's been going on? Well, since our last show, we've inducted the 2002 volleyball team into our Hall of Fame. Aaron Zul Zomaral from women's soccer, Ashley Windmiller from softball and Patricia Walderman from women's basketball. They've all been inducted as a second class into William Woods University's Hall, Athletic Hall of Fame, all of whom hold numerous records, and even the volleyball team was the first ever team to win a national title here at William Woods. Uh, we had senior day for men's and women's basketball against Mid-Continent. The men honored Blake Burgess, Dante Jenkins, Jonathan Nutt, and Seth Thomas, while the women honored Chanel Benson, Stephanie Copeland, Andre Quaquinine, and Katie Scherter. And then also last week, the men's the men's and women's indoor track and field team brought their third straight AMC indoor championship to William Woods. Uh, Matty Emmy was named field athlete of the year, and Coach Radquick was named the indoor AMC field coach of the year for the third straight season. So Ben, that's what's been going on. What else has been happening at the Woods? Well, that's all good. Uh, we got baseball going on. They're eight and one right now. Uh, softball's five and four. They're receiving votes in the preseason NAI poll, and five of the teams they've already played this year have been in the top 25. So they're holding strong right now. Uh, Coach Todd and Coach Chapel couldn't be here tonight with us as they're preparing for the Hannibal Grange game on Thursday. And then um, they also have a game on Saturday against top five teams and Freed Hardman. So with all that going on tonight, uh, we've got a coach show to get through. we got a lot of people here tonight enjoying the show. So when we come back from commercial, we'll have Maddie Emmy and Anthony Stockton to talk about track and field majors, small classes, and big opportunities. And now, with evening programs, graduate degrees, and a learn in your pajamas option known as our online degrees, a powerful education is, well, wherever you are. Sure, a lot of things have changed, but one thing remains. At William Woods University, we have something for everyone. Everyone. William Woods University began with an idea for a place where students could get the best education possible. Fast forward 140 years or so, students from around the world have come to the beautiful traditional campus for unique majors, small classes, and big opportunities. And now, with evening programs, graduate degrees, and a learn in your pajamas option known as our online degrees, a powerful education is, well, wherever you are. Sure, a lot of things have changed, but one thing remains. At William Woods University, we have something for everyone. And we're back to the William Woods Coaches Show here at Harris's Pizza in Fulton. I'm joined here by Matty Emmy and Anthony Stockton. They are two of the five athletes who will be representing William Woods at the 2014 Indoor Track and Field National Championships. Matty will be competing in the 60-meter hurdles, and Anthony will be competing in two events as he will be competing in the shot put and the weight throw. Good afternoon, guys. How are you guys doing? Doing fine. How are you? Good. Well, first, I'm going to ask uh, Maddie a question. Maddie, you qualified for the national championship in the 60-meter hurdles. This is the second time you've done it in the indoor season. First time that you qualified, you were injured, so you weren't able to compete. Last year, you didn't hit the standard, so you weren't able to go back. So this is the first time you've been able to honestly compete in it, but the first time you've qualified since your freshman year. So during that time, just kind of talk about, you know, the injury that prevented you from competing your freshman year and what, how you use that as motivation going into this season, this season's championship. All right. Um, well, when I qualified my freshman year, you know, it was very exciting. Um, first year down here, qualified for nationals, hit the standard right away. Um, and then two weeks later, found out I was injured and didn't want to run due to just wanting to be healthy throughout the season. Um, and coach just wanted to make sure I would last through outdoor season because that was more important. Um, and then last year, we just took it easy in training and didn't 
push through it because we still wanted my body to hold up. Um, and then being able to go out and qualify right at the first meet, uh, you know, it'll <clears throat> it pushes me just to be work hard and use my training and have it, I guess, just be a successful season. Now this will be your third overall time competing in the 60 meter hurdles at the national level. You've qualified well, and competed twice in the outdoor circuit. This will be your first time competing as the indoors we previously mentioned. So what can you use from the past previous experiences at the national level to help maybe prepare you for what you're about to have in two weeks? Uh, nationals, they're definitely, it's exciting and overwhelming with all the people and track meets are busy in general with everything going on. Um, you know, you just kind of got to do your own thing and stay in your own world and not worry about anyone else around you. You can't go and looking at times and seeds and what other people are running. You just got to do your own thing and hopefully your training is paid off and you do well. Uh, Anthony, you come in uh, to this Nationals. You won the national title in the hammer throw, which is the equivalent of the weight throw for the indoor for people who do not know. So you kind of the defending champion here coming in. So. Does that add any extra pressure to yourself, you know, that, you know, your name's out there as a national title holder? Do you think that brings some extra pressure on yourself as you prepare for the for what you're about to go through in two weeks? Uh, yes and no. I mean, it does because uh, because I went from literally, literally a nobody to becoming a national national hammer thrower. But it also does at the same time because it's, a, it's, it's the one event that I love and it, to me, just be another, just be another meet. Now, now you like Maddie. You competed in numerous uh, NAI in national championships. So, how can you use your experience from your past? You know, even including the one that you won, to help you get motivated and prepare for the 2014 indoor championships. Well, it does a lot. I mean, especially from freshman year to now. Like freshman year indoor, I, I didn't even I can I qualify, but I didn't even get a, a qualifying mark, so I couldn't even get past finals. And to, and to what I've to what I've done now, I've definitely used the experience to learn how to calm myself down and treat like every like an everyday me. Mm -hmm. Now this question is for both of you here, uh, Maddie. Since you've been here <coughs> and Poe since your sophomore year, William Woods has won track and field championships in both the indoor and outdoor conference each year. So I guess it's come come up a, ha a habit for you guys. So just kind of talk about you know the importance of of Anthony you ending on a high note, bringing your team another conference title in the indoor season and Maddie just the importance of helping the team win three straight titles so what does that mean for both of you guys uh, yeah. uh well for me and this championship this last championship I had very little to do with it all score was uh, measly 10 points but really I really have to thank some of the contributors like Martel Washington uh, Gabriel De Santos he did a lot for our team the 4 by 4 team did a, did a heck of a ton a lot they scored individually 20 points apiece so really, I had very little to do with it. All I, all I was was an over glorified cheerleader. So I'd rather thank everybody on the team for help for helping me, you know, have you know, they retire here soon with three championships. And Maddie, you scored 42 of the team's 203 points. You're the highest scoring field athlete there, which in turn had you named the field athlete of the meet. So just talk about your experience in helping William Woods winning three straight titles. Uh, conference. Rad always preaches that it's all about team, which it is. Everyone contributes, you know. Um, it's not all about one person. And having that award is just another achievement. I mean, it's nothing compared to winning conference three years in a row. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so both of you guys, so uh, I'm gonna, last question here for both of you. Anthony, uh, unfortunately your, your career is coming to an end here at William Woods. The 2014 Indoor Championships will be your last meeting, will be your last competition for William Woods. Um, what are some of your favorite moments during your throwing career here at Woods, and what would be the absolute perfect way for you to end your illustrious career here? Well, my favorite moment of all time, and it's, it does it has nothing to do with the national championship. My favorite moment of all time here had to be indoor, my sophomore year when we won our first conference title because it was at Mizzou. It, it was while it was while we didn't have our own indoor. It, you know, we didn't have all meat. So we were competing against Mizzou kids and we were getting waxed. I mean, just destroyed in every event. But conference, but, but conference wise, we, we, we were doing very well. And it, we just got done with shot put and I, and I, ran, I ran to Coach Rat and I asked him, are we winning? You know, what's the score? And as soon as he told me, I literally just fell down on the track and said, yes, finally, finally we won an indoor conference. So that's probably by far my favorite. Uh, my favorite experience of all times, and what, what was the second part of the question? What would be the absolutely perfect way for you to end your Woods career? Really, that's, I mean, 
it doesn't really matter how I end my career. I've done what I wanted to do. I literally became, I, I, I literally went from a kid who went to state with no coach and with no coach, no training to somehow almost win a championship to, 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 to backing up what I said in high school. Like before I graduate college, I will, in, I will be a national champion. So I've done everything I've literally wanted to do. There's nothing, anything else just be icing on the cake at this point, to be honest with me. Let's hope you can get some double air icing by winning a shot put title and a weight throw title here coming soon. So, Maddie, you have a full year of eligibility left. You know, you're going to nationals here. Uh, what are some of your goals that you wish to achieve at nationals coming up in two weeks? And also, what are some of the things that you're looking to do as an individual and as a team for the outdoor season coming soon? I mean, a national championship would be nice, you know, but um, I can't complain about an All-American either. And if that doesn't happen, just a PR and running a good race and doing my thing. Um, as far as outdoor goes, hopefully qualify again in the 100 hurdles um, and maybe other events if we decide to do the heptathlon. Uh, but, and I mean, help the team do another conference championship and again next year, pretty much the same thing. All right. Well, guys, thank you for your time very much. We'll return here at the Coaches Show with baseball coach Darren Munns. Everyone. William Woods University began with an idea for a place where students could get the best education possible. Fast forward 140 years or so, students from around the world have come to the beautiful traditional campus for unique majors, small classes, and big opportunities. And now, with evening programs, graduate degrees, and a learn in your pajamas option known as our online degrees, a powerful education is, well, wherever you are. Sure, a lot of things have changed, but one thing remains. At William Woods University, we have something for There's a call to be answered. The spirit of competition is still alive inside. The desire still drives. The phrase student athlete has a great ring to it. Lasting friendships are ready to be made. You just want to keep playing. Game on. Learn more at NAIA.org. For everyone. William Woods University began with an idea for a place where students could get the best education possible. Fast forward 140 years or so, students from around the world have come to the beautiful traditional campus for unique majors, small classes, and big opportunities. And now, with evening programs, graduate degrees, and a learn in your pajamas option known as our online degrees, a powerful education is, well, wherever you are. Sure, a lot of things have changed, but one thing remains. At William Woods University, we have something for everyone. Yeah. Now we're back to the Aris's Pizza here in Fort Missouri for the William Woods Coaches Show. I'm now joined by baseball coach Darren Munns and relief pitcher James Ball. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing this afternoon? Doing great. Doing fantastic. Good, good. Uh, coach, your team has, has off to a fantastic start for 2014 season. Just stole his work. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, that's what he always uses. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> well, James, you've been fantastic this year, so that's an appropriate word for you to use. So. Uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> So you guys are off to an 8-1 start. You guys just went 3-1 at the Joplin tournament. Uh, so what are some of your thoughts and early season assessments of your team so far? Um, I'm, I'm pleased um, with the early season. Um, it's always good when you get off to a good start. Um, we've experienced both good starts and bad starts since I've been here. It's really important that we continue to play well and continue to play regularly, hopefully weather permitting, and um, continue to grow and develop as a team. Um, so yeah, I'm very pleased. Now you guys have been had a great start of the year with the pitching staff. Your pitching staff has done absolutely fantastic here over the first nine games. And then your offense has come along here here up late. So what do you think that just some of that attributes to the early season success of both the staff and some of the offenses? Um, I think the pitching staff, uh, we have a, a really deep group of arms, but also our catchers are, are vital to that. Um, that gets overlooked a lot, but we have two senior catchers um, that have uh, been with us for four years and they're they're really awesome at calling game, handling pitching staff, some things that get overlooked unless you really pay attention and uh, Derek Fletcher and Kyle Schweitzer have been outstanding. Um, they call every pitch, um, they make my job very easy um, and they do a great job. Um, as far as our group as a whole, um, I think what's helped us is we usually bring in 15 to 20 newcomers and this year we only had, I think, eight newcomers. 
Um, they're all very important. They've been very helpful, but we have a, a nucleus that's come back, and I think the growing pains aren't quite as much early. Um, so that's been a contributing factor, as well as just having a good group of uh, great assistant coaches, uh, positive leaders, and um, that, that helps a lot. You're only as good as the people around you. Now, one of the pitchers that's been really solid two starts here, back to back starts for you, is Dane Smith. Last season, he was about a 500 pitcher. He could have won some more games, but it was just the tough luck pitcher for your staff last year. Uh, what has he done in the offseason to become to take that step from being a dependable starter to that front of the rotation guy? Because he's 2 and 0 right now with a 138 ERA. So that's top of the rotation stuff here. So just what, do you, what has he done in the offseason to take that next step? I'd like to say he did a lot of baseball stuff, but he actually worked on his family farm. So maybe we'll, uh, we'll have Matt Thomas and him are farmers. So maybe we'll have, and he's really good. So maybe we'll just have every pitcher we have go farm all summer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, Dane is, um, you said it best, his record last year was really misleading. Um, I think a pitcher's one loss record, um, at least in baseball, it can be misleading. Is not always truly indicative of that pitcher. I mean, he always pitches game one or game two versus the other team's best arm. They're usually low scoring games that either team could win. A lot of times he's not around for the decision. Um, so those things come into play, but if you look at his innings and the number of starts he gives us where we have a chance to win, it's, it's off the charts. And he's just a really prepared guy. Um, he's, uh, you know, has a quiet toughness about him and his, uh, most importantly, his stuff is really, really good. So. Um, yeah, he'll be good for us all year, we hope. Well, that's good. Uh, another pitcher that's made a big impact, an immediate impact on your team is actually this guy to your left here, uh, James Ball. He's been a very effective pitcher for you this season. He hasn't allowed a run yet over his first 14 innings, but more importantly, he kind of has this role as he can be the long guy out of your bullpen or he can come in and pick up a save as he's picked up two wins on the year along with two saves. So how does it mean for you as a coach to have somebody that's as versatile as James in your bullpen? Definitely the best beard in the American Midwest Conference. <laughs> Without question, he was recruited due to, because of the beard. Um, I didn't even know he pitched until he got here. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm, I'm just kidding. That, that is a dandy. <laughs> no, he's, he's uh, been a blessing. I always tease Coach Gaston, who um, our softball coach will be up here soon, about she only needs two or three pitchers and we need 15 to get through a season. But, James is probably, and I'm not talking about the beard, but probably the closest thing we have to like um, what she gets to use in softball, which is a guy that can throw literally every day. Um, he's he's available, and um, I hope his arm continues that trait. But um, it's it's really valuable because um, you know what you get, and that guy's available every day, and it really helps your bullpen. It softens your bullpen, especially when they're really affected. I'm sure he'll give up a run if you said that out loud on the probably the air, yeah, but announcers are, a jinx, but yeah. you know you can blame me on Monday, so. <laughs> So on the offensive side, you've got new, another newcomer making an immediate impact in Cody Stewart. Uh, he leads the team in batting average with a 550 batting average over the first nine games. And a lot of soft hits. A lot of yeah. soft hits. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of bunts and bloops, but go ahead. Now, a lot of those bunts and bloops he gets on because of his speed. That was going to be the next thing I was talking about, was his speed. He leads the team with five stolen bases. So as you said here, he with a lot of bunt hits, bloop hits, what does somebody that has his kind of speed who can affect the game on your roster, how does it feel to have that kind of weapon on, on your team? Um, he, he fits what we like to do. Uh, he's a really hard worker. Um, his speed speaks for itself, but he's an ideal guy. He's a really good bunter. Um, he has a good feel on the bases, and, he, and he's, he's got on base and done some good things for us, either hitting in the, the two or the nine hole, um, which are very important. Uh, holes in the batting order to set the table for some of our run producers. So, yeah, well, I expect him to have a great season, and um, he's really fit in great. And uh, hope he continues. If not, if not, he just he won't play. You know? <laughs> I don't want to get a big head while he's sitting here in the audience. I know. Yeah, I understand. You better not eat too much pizza either. <laughs> understand. Well, another player we want to talk about here is a is a returner for you guys, Zach Nichols. He was, your lead, uh, he was your returning RBI leader from a year ago. He's picked up things right back where he left off last season. Uh, his Saturday's win over Grandview University, he was 3 for 4, drove in all five runs. He broke a 2 2 tie in the top of the seventh with a bases clearing triple. Bases were loaded, hit a triple, scored all three runs. 
So how, how important is it for Zach to get off such a good start after having these lofty expectations coming into the season? It's good. I gave him the triple sign, by the way. You gave him triple yeah, sign? Yeah, I gave him signs in third base, and I, I put triple on for that one. <laughs> no, he, he, Zach's awesome. I mean, he's a really talented guy who also works really hard. Um, we're fortunate because he's probably our most talented player, and he also plays the game the right way, and that makes it easy to coach and easy to have a team when, it, when you're – most talented guys also works as hard as everybody else or on the same level as everybody else. But, yeah, he, I expect him to have a great season. I mean, he's really dedicated to hitting. Um, you know, he takes every at-bat seriously, and, um, you know, and he has the ability to hit at a high level. And, um, you know, some guys just have a knack with men on base, and, and he's shown that here. He's, he's averaged literally over an RBI per game play, which, I mean, that's an amazing feat. I hope it continues. <clears throat> now we'll talk about him. Talk about your schedule here. It's kind of adjusted here within the last four or five hours here. So, just kind of talk about the schedule that you have coming up and tell us, uh, tell us, Al's fans, where maybe you will end up playing or what you have on the slate coming up. Uh, your guess is as good as mine right now. But, Let's go to um, California, what you say. That, just fly yeah, out right. there. <laughs> yeah. Um, are we raising money by doing this show? I mean, we can. Ta Coach Asano goes out there about once a year. Maybe we can just tag along. That'd be all right. That'd be all right with that. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure for this weekend. I mean, we're supposed to play at home, but um, it's, you know, temperature in the 20s. So I, I don't think that's going to happen. We're still waiting to hear. We're searching for a, a warmer, drier field at a, to be announced later. So You know, I bet, uh, I bet Dylan Hastings knows a nice, dry, warm field in San Diego. So he's going to go into California and maybe he can uh, get the hook up. That'd be all right. That'd be all right. All right. So, yeah, I got some questions for James Ball here. James, thank you for uh, joining us today. The first question is the question I've wanted to ask you since I first saw you on campus. <laughs> what is the inspiration behind the beard? Uh, well, really it all started as a no-shave November at my uh, junior college. Um, kind of mixed along with, I was told I looked like a professional baseball player, uh, Brian Wilson. Uh, so I kind of looked him up, um, saw that you know, without facial hair we look similar. I saw that he was rocking a pretty cool little beard, and I decided that, you know what, I can do it. Um, really, I kind of went along with it, and since you know, November 1st, 2011, I've just been growing it ever since. Um, it's really become so much more than just, you know, I'm trying to look like someone else. It's, you know, it, it's really built a lot of character, um, a lot of dedication. Um, it's <laughs> into it, a lot of money. Um, I average about 20 bucks a month. Um, On what? Maintenance. So. Maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> so so how, does, how does one, say, say I want to grow that out, so how would one maintain a beard like that? Well, see, <laughs> not everyone's blessed with the talent. <laughs> but uh, some tips I'd give was, uh, you know, when you first start out, a lot of a lot of people go through that stage of the itchy, scratchy, and uh, right away, within the first two three weeks, you got to hit it with the shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> and then once you get through that phase, it's about two three months of you know, well now it's I'll get out of the shower and it's really wet and you got to dampen it down. <laughs> so you got to get through that phase. Well, then after you've had it for a year. You'll be running, and it'll be off to the side, <laughs> and then uh, you get even even today. You know, I'm eating the pizza, and you know, I'll be catching food with it. <laughs> I must say, it's the uh, it's a good food saver. Yeah. You, know, you, you can uh, always tell what you had from earlier, but. And yeah, Chris, I might add to Coach McAndrews, everybody knows him as Boomer, mm -hmm. um, over this past weekend was storing his, his, storing his own sunflower seeds in the beer <laughs> <laughs> during the game. So it, it serves many purposes, it really does. It's a multi-use beer. Yeah, a multi-use beer. Now, my next question is baseball related, believe it or not. We just didn't bring you up here because of the beard. You've been doing quite well on the mound here in your first few games here at William Woods. Uh, you have a 2-0 and record, 0-0 zero, zero ERA, and you have two saves in the year. So what was the tra what's it been like for you being able to make that transition from junior college to William Woods? So how's that been for you? Uh, really the biggest thing um, 
from North Central to William Woods is definitely you know the guys I have behind me. Um, I threw strikes at North Central. I kind of did the same thing, but you know my team has made me into the pitcher I am today. Um, you know I can get a ground ball, and it's really the guys you know at shortstop, third base, second, and first. You know my outfielders. You know, they got to make the plays behind me, and they do a fantastic job at it. Um, if I didn't have the, go the guys I have now, you know, I wouldn't have the stats. And really, it's the team that makes the pitcher. And I got to give a lot of credit to my catchers. You know, I really try to be on the same page as them. You know, they uh, call a fantastic game. Um, I think I've only shook them off once or twice. You know, on my own, just not same page, thinking the same pitch, but. Uh, a lot of it has to go with, you know, I have a lot of confidence in the guys behind me and that allows me to do what I need to to, you know, get us to where we need to be. Now there's been a couple of, uh, you've been kind of Mr. Everything out of the pen this season as we referenced earlier. Uh, and you've went some outings where you've went, you know, as, as long as three and two thirds innings. There's been some that you just came in and picked up at one inning <coughs> save. So, you know, what do you feel with your pitching style? Are you more comfortable with with your role? Do you like that adrenaline being able to come in closing the game, or do you prefer that middle of the inning, middle middle game where you can come in, throw multiple innings? So, which one really is, is you know, more fits your style of pitching? Well, really, you haven't seen it yet. Uh, starting is my uh, my favorite. Um, that way, I'm. So he's my pissed own. at me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you say it on the air? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. it's right. it's done. Said. I <laughs> <laughs> cost money there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, but really, it uh, it really doesn't matter. Um, I want the ball, and I'll do whatever it takes to get it. And as long as I'm on the mound. You know, that's what I live for. You know, if it's, hey, I need you to come in at a really tight spot and get this guy out, I'll do it. If you need me to come in and, you know, relieve a guy after a few innings and go for the rest of the game, I'll do it. If you want me to start, relieve, and close all for myself, I'll do it. Um, I got the arm slots to go for it. But uh, really, uh, I just want the ball. And I don't, you know, I'll do whatever role deem necessary, whatever my coach wants me to do, whatever my team needs me to do, I'll do it for them. So. It's, it sounds like you got a good team player on your side there. I hope so. I hope so. i got one more question for you <laughs> before we go. i got one more question about the beer, okay? Uh, during this, you said you said November 2011. Is, it, is that when it started? Yes, sir. Between now and then, have you ever thought about shaving it? Shaving it? No. no. Uh, unfortunately, um, after having it at North Central, um, for almost a full year, uh, my head coach there told me that I had to trim it up a little bit. Um, I took three inches off of it. Um, it was <laughs> probably this long after I cut it. Mm -hmm. um, so since then, I've uh, got, <laughs> at, in Duck Dynasty terms, about two reeds okay. worth of length uh, since then. Um, my baby is now up to about, I believe, 11 inches now. Mm -hmm. um, so she, uh, she's not going anywhere anytime soon. Not going anywhere anytime soon. So there is, there is nothing that will make you shave it. There is nothing that will make you shave it then. At this point, no. Nope. <laughs> Already been offered 15. Ooh. Wow. Pass the hat. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that is head coach Darren Munns and pitcher James the Beard Ball. So, guys, uh, thank you for joining us. And fans, check back with www.owls.com to find out where the Owls will be playing this weekend. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. <laughs> I'll check <Okay>. also. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back with softball coach Tracy Gassineau. There's a call to be answered. The spirit of competition is still alive inside. The desire still drives. The phrase, student athlete, has a great ring to it. Lasting friendships are ready to be made. You just want to keep playing. Game on. Learn more at NAIA.org. Everyone. 
William Woods University began with an idea for a place where students could get the best education possible. Fast forward 140 years or so, students from around the world have come to the beautiful traditional campus for unique majors, small classes, and big opportunities. And now, with evening programs, graduate degrees, and a learn in your pajamas option known as our online degrees, a powerful education is, well, wherever you are. Sure, a lot of things have changed, but one thing remains. At William Woods University, we have something for everyone. There's a call to be answered. The spirit of competition is still alive inside. The desire still drives. The phrase student athlete has a great ring to it. Lasting friendships are ready to be made. You just want to keep playing. Game on. Learn more at NAIA.org. All right, and we're back with softball coach Tracy Gasnow and senior Lindsay the Cure. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. We're going to do our best to follow that performance by James Ball. Um, so, coach, you guys are 5-4 and four in the season to be a two top 25 teams, um, and you played already three top 15 teams at the Alabama Arctic Blast. So what are your overall thoughts on how the season has been going on, especially with this young team? Um, well, yeah, I'm pleased that um, we always play a good, tough schedule, and, and so – Sometimes early in the season, you have to, it's, it's a little bit of a roll of the dice on how you're going to do and how you're going to respond to things, um, especially when you play teams from the south that have been outside that have um, got a little bit more you know, on the field, quote unquote, game experience. So, um, you know, not making excuses. Um, you know, we still have four losses that um, all but one of them, I think, were within our reach. Um, there, was, there was one that I felt that really wasn't um, after, after the game was over. It was, it was, a bigger probably margin than, than it looked, the score showed. Um, so I really felt there was only one game we really didn't play real well. Um, but we've had our, we've already had a lot of experiences coming from behind, getting leads, losing leads, um, winning games in extra innings, losing games in extra innings. So um, we're getting valuable experience. So in, in that way, I'm, I'm real pleased at, at what we've been able to do. And Lindsay, your overall thoughts on how the year's gone for you guys? Yeah, I think that we, like she said, our record is five and four, but playing three ranked teams, or five ranked five of the nine games were ranked, and uh, one of them was receiving both. I feel like our team did a good job of uh, staying in. We could have won some of those games, I believe, but I feel like we showed some good teams that were going to be tough to beat this year. And Coach, on Saturday, you guys played three top 15, or in a term, you played top five, three top 15, but you played, I think, what, Lindsey Wilson, um, gosh, um, Campbellsville Mathis. and Mar yeah. Martin Mathis. Yeah. Each game went to extra innings. Yeah. You had a tough loss against Lindsey Wilson, but you, you mentioned in a quote that you told me that you got you're really proud of how the team responded. How, are you are you pleased with how this young team has been doing, despite you know the tough losses throughout the season thus far? Yeah, uh, real pleased. I mean, um, that that Lindsey Wilson was was tough. That was a tough loss to to take and um, um, have a pretty controlling lead and and then lose it. And, um, and then, uh, you know, lose, lose the way that we did next extra innings. And, um, uh, we started on the field on Saturday morning. We started warming up at 8.30 in the morning, and we walked off that field at 5.30 that night. So you can't do that in practice. You can't, you can't, um, you, you can't assimilate that and, um, and experience that. So for us to um, have that disappointment and that, that probably frustration and then have to come right back, and um, and we got we we uh, were behind early in that next game and and then battled back and um, so we had the highs and lows of that of that day and um, you know everybody you play is uh, it's the beauty of our game and I think Coach Munns can agree it's you know sometimes it's one run it's one one little thing that that happens that that could decide a game um, in our game so um, to be able to <coughs> overcome some of that stuff and. Uh, um, I think you know the key for for our young team is to um, rem sometimes have a short memory. We talk about that. I think I've, I've told my team that sometimes we have to have a short memory um, about things and, and let things go and, and then digest it later. And Lindsay, you're off to a fantastic start this season, leading the team in numerous types of categories, including batting average, home runs, RBIs. Um, did you expect such a fast start to your senior year this quick? I mean. It's 
It feels great to have started my senior season out like that, but I owe a lot of my success to my teammates. They always pump me up. Every time I go up to bat, they have a specific chant that they do for me that always puts a smile on my face, and it gets me pumped up for it. And I, all, I really do well just because I think of the pitchers and how hard they work every practice. They are there either before or after every practice working extra hard, and I want to perform for them just like they do for me. So, Coach, besides your seniors and Lindsey, Mack, and Becca, who else has stepped up uh, and played a big role uh, through the nine games? Um, you know, you, you can't get too bogged down by stats because I think, um, especially the pitching that we faced so far, um, that could be defeating for us or deflating. Um, you know, we've had a number of people, and um, I don't know that I could really, there's not really one set person. Um, each game, it's been somebody different that's come up and provided something big. Um, we have speed on our team. That's always exciting when, when you have some speed, and, um, and some of those fast ones can be a, a smart plug on, on things that happen. And um, So we've had some of that, um, and just um, sometimes somebody might not play. Um, I said it last year, or last weekend, um, Shelly didn't necessarily play extremely well offensively, but had an outstanding defensive weekend in Oklahoma and um, at shortstop all, all four games. And, and so that's, you know, those things can provide sparks as well. And Lindsay, you're, you're being one of the three seniors this year. Um, have you been able to take a leadership role on yet this season, especially with the freshmen that have been able to make a few starts on the year? Yeah, you would think that having eight new players on a team, that'd be really hard for any type of leadership role, but especially six of them being freshmen, but they're very responsible. They're very talented and we have so much depth of each position on the field that it really hasn't been hard for myself or Becca or Mac McKenzie to really show them the ropes. They pretty much have it all down, it seems like. That's good. Uh, and in your mind, how have the freshmen adjusted to from high school ball to college? Uh, you know, well, I think, um, again, the challenge, um, I don't think I've told them this, but um, Alyssa and Alex and I have talked about it. Um, the challenge for them is uh, realizing that that we play such a tough schedule and we've played some of the best pitchers that you know we might see all year not to get to bogged down in the fa failures i mean our game is a game of failures and you know we want to succeed more for sure but um not getting bogged down in that and not losing any confidence and um and i think our, our upperclassmen and returners have they can provide some of that for them some of that knowledge and experience listen it's a long season it's you know you got to take things um as you can and and especially when you have a lot of different lineups and, you know, we're trying to figure that stuff out. And I've got some fun, exciting, you know, decisions to make. And um, I probably had more fun coaching this year, um, this team, than, than maybe I ever have because I have so many options. Um, I'm, I'm a strategy person and I love that part of the game. It's my absolute favorite part of it. It's probably why I coach softball, for sure, is for that strategy. And uh, I've, I've got a team that lets me do that and uh, wipes me out mentally, emotionally, sometimes after games. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's great to have that with uh, um, and some of those young faces that, that have probably don't know yet how much talent they have. Right. So. so, Lindsay, you guys are back. You're down in Alabama. You got a nice tan. Everybody's, I know, feeling <laughs> warm, feeling good. <laughs> now you're back in this wonderful Midwest. It's freezing. We got snow on the way on Friday. As a player, how do you guys adjust? pre-game, in-game, to staying warm and, you know, keeping your bats hot in the season? Well, I mean, myself, as well as the returning players, are used to playing in cold weather. I mean, that's our, half of our season or more of our season, and it has been nice to play in warmer weather, I'll admit, but I think that as far as playing-wise, I mean, Coach helped us out yesterday by having us practice half, half of the practice with outside, that way we could, like, see it was definitely colder, and we could see what it, this is going to be like. This is how we're going to play the rest of our season. It's going to be an adjustment, but I think we'll be able to do it. Speaking of the weather, we had games this weekend. Elephant Nazarene, 10th ranked team in Clark College, but Mother Nature has already played a factor like it did last year around this time. So um, now you are now you won't play until March 8th at Linwood Belleville Tournament, and your home game is not pushed back until March 14th at Benedict and Springfield. So how do you, as a coach, keep your team focused, mentally prepared, and mentally you know, for this weather, you take them outside more, or you just keep, keep doing what you're doing? Well, um, I actually spend the last few days trying to find a place to go, so if anybody south is watching this right now, <laughs> I have emailed you. Please email me back. <laughs> um, we're looking for names. I mean, you know, you, you, you want to play, for sure. You don't want to, after, especially if you've been outside, and 
um, get that little taste. And um, I, I know for me, um, th that last taste is, is losing losing an extra inning. You want to get that out of out of your mind, out of your system. Um, and so we, you know, we're, we're looking for a place to play. If it doesn't happen, then um, you know, let's. I always joke about because um, I think everybody knows basketball is my favorite sport and, and my favorite sport to play. Um, and uh, but 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 outdoor sports, we just have a different. We have to have a different toughness <coughs> about us that we have to deal with the with the excitement and then the disappointment of not getting to play and and then preparing ourselves at the last minute um, or um, accepting that we're not going to play at the last minute. So. You know, we'll just do what we do and, and look at uh, when we can get out on the tennis courts like we did yesterday. Um, we're gonna we're gonna take advantage of learning how to how to do that and how to just stay outside and stay try to stay warm when you're doing you know you're doing your job. So um, we'll do a little mixture of that and um, just continue to work hard inside. All right, and to close out the, to this segment, Lindsay, we had Becca on last time. She gave us a good story about uh, Coach Gasino. So. You've been here four years. What has been your best, funniest moment playing every coach? Uh, kind of like Becca did. I have like a serious one and a more funny one. But uh, my serious one, it has been awesome to be a member of two conference championships. And we're really hoping that this could be <coughs> McKenzie and I as third. But a uh, more funny one actually happened this past weekend. We were um, just gotten done playing a game and we were waiting to hear our dinner plans. We're all in our huddle. Oh, <laughs> teammates had family members down there and she said if you guys want to well what she meant to say was if you guys want to you're welcome to eat with your family and we'll meet up later at the hotel but what actually came out of her mouth was if you'd like to eat your family you may go ahead don't listen to me half the time <laughs> well we appreciate you guys being here tonight good luck the best good luck the rest of the way um, when we come back we'll have women's basketball player Andre Poe Cornai There's a call to be answered. The spirit of competition is still alive inside. The desire still drives. The phrase, student athlete, has a great ring to it. Lasting friendships are ready to be made. You just want to keep playing. Game on. Learn more at NAIA.org. William Woods University began with an idea for a place where students could get the best education possible. Fast forward 140 years or so, students from around the world have come to the beautiful traditional campus for unique majors, small classes, and big opportunities. And now, with evening programs, graduate degrees, and a learn in your pajamas option known as our online degrees, a powerful education is, well, wherever you are. Sure, a lot of things have changed, but one thing remains. At William Woods University, we have something for everyone. <clears throat> and we're back here at Eric's Pizza for the Wayne Woods Coaches Show. I am now joined by senior guard Andre Quake the Nine. Uh, she is a senior for the women's basketball team. They are currently 20 and 8 overall in the year, 13 and 7 on, on the conference season. Uh, you guys have a very important game coming up at Hannibal LaGrange on Thursday night at 5:30. If they win that game, they lock the number four seed in the AMC tournament. So it's a very important game for them. Uh, Andre Quake, thank you for joining us. And how are you tonight? Good, how are you? I'm doing fine, getting through this. So, um, first off here, I ask you here is, um, how did, you've got a very unique story of how you went to William Woods here. You, you were a junior college player, you went to Xavier University of Louisiana, William Woods recruited you hard, but you decided to go down to New Orleans. Yes. To New Orleans, and uh, then you left there, you were going to do something a little bit unique, but then something happened, so how about you tell us that story here a little bit. Um, well, as you know, um, I was a former player for Xavier University in Louisiana, and obviously that took a toll on me. I miss California way too much, so I decided to leave, come back home. And um, I was home for the summer for three months, and, you know, my mom always told me, you know, if basketball doesn't work out, you know, Clay, what are you going to do? And I'm like, well, I'm going to play basketball still. She was like, no, but if it doesn't, what are you going to do? So I had, you know, plan A, B, and C, so plan B was go to the Navy. You know, did some research and 
let's be honest, I don't like water, and I'm not really a swimmer. I mean, I can swim to save my life, but Navy wasn't it. So let's try something else. I don't want to go Army. Let's try Air Force. So sitting at home, just thinking, I'm like, okay, what do I want to do? I'm not playing basketball. I'm not going to school. Okay, let's just go try the Air Force. So I went, saw my recruiter, and, you know, got everything set up for the test, and, you know, I was ready to take it. And as soon as I walk through the door, I get a text message. I'm thinking, okay, it's going to be another one. Good luck. You can do it. No, Coach Chapla. And I'm like, what? So I opened it, and he's like, hey, Quay, you want to come play for William Woods? Yeah. And immediately I left, and I was like, I'm on my way. You want me to be here? I'm like, okay, good. So nothing. I'm here in Missouri. <laughs> well, I'm sure Coach Chapel is uh, probably glad he hit you just in time because maybe, you know, five more minutes, he may not be able to reach you. But so far, you come to William Woods, uh, you're here for one year, you're a senior, you lead the team in scoring you at 11.9 points per game, you're second in the AMC in three-pointers, total three-pointers made, you have 63 on the year, and you're 38th nationally in three-point percentages, you have a 38.1 uh, three-point goal percentage, which is 38th nationally, as I just said. So what are just some of your thoughts so far on the season? Um, I thought so far on the season that um, we're doing pretty, pretty well, you know, as a team. And, you know, every day we're competing for something, whether it's fourth place, whether it's first, eighth, tenth. We're competing for something every single day. And including in practice, it doesn't have to just be a game. We're competing in practice to make each other better, you know, to get stronger, you know. And if something's not going your way, you know, what can you do as, you know, an individual to help your teammates get to where they want to be? And so far, we're doing good. Um, defense is good. Offense is good. We just have to take it day by day, you know, not try to move too fast. Just see what we can do right here, right now, and to win. <laughs> now, you say take it day by day, game by game. That's what Coach Chapel has been saying for about the past month now. Uh, so the next game for you guys, you have a big game against Hannibal Grange. If you guys do win, you get the fourth seed in the conference tournament, which will give you a bye out of that opening round game. Uh, so what would it mean for you guys as a team to be able to collect that first round by essentially in the AMC tournament? This will be big for us because as a team, you know, we came out strong and uh, we ended up struggling a little bit um, against Lion when we went down to their place and home against Free, you know, we lost pretty bad and, you know, we had pretty a rocky start, ups and downs, but um, we just try to get better every day. That's just the main, the main thing for us is just to get better, you know, even if we lose or win. You know, we just take that win or we take that, you know, loss and we try to come together as a team and see what can we do better to be better than we were yesterday. You know, it's not, you know, rocket times. <laughs> you know, we just got to put something together. But, you know, we have great players on the team that can always come up with ideas. That to do. You know, we help each other out as much as we can possible. We also try to help the coaching staff out too. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, here's your, so this is your senior year, your last season here. So uh, you've only been at Williams for one year, but I'm sure you've made some great memories and made some great friends here that will follow you upon after you leave here. So what are just some of your favorite moments so far here at William Woods, and what would be the perfect ending for your Woods career? Ooh, one year. Okay, it's a few months. Um, well, my best memory here would probably be, you know, William Woods by itself, the campus overall. You know, to, to say it's a small campus, everyone knows everybody. Even I'm walking down the hall, people are like, hey, quiet. I'm like, whoa, who are you? Like, okay, hey, I'm just smiling, <laughs> But, you know, everyone's friendly here. You know, they're warming, open arms. You know, if you look lost, even though you're not lost, they'll help you. <laughs> I got this. You know, you make friends on and off the court, you know, wherever you are. And, um... You know, to end this season, you know, as, as you said, I'm only here for one year. It's my last year. It's sad because, you know, basketball is all I do. So, you know, it's kind of ended for me pretty quick. You know, one day you wake up, you're like, oh, first game. And you wake up again, it's like, oh, my God, the last game. <laughs> like, okay. How would you like your career to end? What would be a perfect ending for you? <sighs> perfect ending for me was just to, you know, I've never been to the national tournament before. So it was just to go there at least win first round, you know, just to experience something fun with my teammates, you know, try to get the best of the best in as I can, you know, try to bond with them a little bit more, first time to go, oh my God, first time to go, you know, um, and just to, just to enjoy it, 
you know, I, I didn't really have any goals or anything to set. My goal was just to play basketball as long as I can, you know, to try to get to the next level from here. But, you know, I'm just still working on a BA degree, so it's kind of where my focus is at. <laughs> Wish you well, best of luck for the rest of the season, Clay. And we'll be right back here at William Woods Coaches Show to wrap things up. There's a call to be answered. The spirit of competition is still alive inside. The desire still drives. The phrase student athlete has a great ring to it. Lasting friendships are ready to be made. You just want to keep playing. Game on. Learn more at NAIA.org. Everyone. William Woods University began with an idea for a place where students could get the best education possible. Fast forward 140 years or so, students from around the world have come to the beautiful traditional campus for unique majors, small classes, and big opportunities. And now, with evening programs, graduate degrees, and a learn in your pajamas option known as our online degrees, a powerful education is, well, wherever you are. Sure, a lot of things have changed, but one thing remains. At William Woods University, we have something for everyone. All right, we're back to close out the show. I am Ben Mazzara, and to my left is Chris Kasky. So we appreciate everybody coming out tonight. It's a big crowd. Um, I pre I'm sure Harris has appreciates it and eating, every eating all the pizza and salad. Um, baseball home opener is still on for Saturday as of now uh, against Ashford and Briarcliff. Um, softball will be back in action, like I said earlier. Uh, what is it? Month? March? Yeah, March. <laughs> we're, we're, we're on March. We're on March. I was going to say November. I don't know why. So we're on March 8th. March 8th. <laughs> I'm gone. Uh, so, so fans, come on out and watch the Owls. Uh, stay up on www.owls.com. Uh, we're going to have changes probably to schedule most likely. Uh, but previews, recaps on softball, baseball, golf starting up this month. Um, again, we appreciate Eris's for their hospitality today, for the food. Um, and we'd like to thank our 20 corporate sponsors for the night. Um, and our next Owl show will be coming up in March. So for Scott Barker on the production, Chris Kiaski on my left, I'm Ben Mazzara signing off from Maris's. There's a call to be answered. The spirit of competition is still alive inside. The desire still drives. The phrase, student athlete, has a great ring to it. Lasting friendships are ready to be made. You just want to keep playing. Game on. Learn more at NAIA.org.